Hello, welcome to today's episode of the Academy. Today we're going to continue our walk through Sun Tzu's Art of War, and we're going to start here in Chapter Five. And Sun Tzu titles this one "Energy," and it's uh, as you as we develop this, the the chapter, you're going to kind of understand where he gets the concept of energy through this. There is an element that kind of threads its way through all the sentences, uh, but you should use your imagination a little bit there. Now there are 23 sentences in this chapter. Unlike the previous chapters, 21 of those 23 actually relate well to the tabletop. The first two uh, don't really relate well. Uh, I would like to just kind of briefly touch on them just so you get an idea of what they're about. Uh, because they do apply just when you, as you start thinking of your force. Um, now they also, it also applies in team games where you've got multiple players on a side. Uh, actually, in the battle, like in an apocalypse game. Now, I'm not going to read the two sentences, uh, but he, his concept is basically about control of a force. Uh, it, in his mind, there is no real difference between a large force and a small force. Uh, controlling them is just as easy. It doesn't make any difference in size. All it is is a matter of splitting it, dividing it up. So, again, you've got platoons, companies, battalions, regiments, divisions, and on the way up, right? Breaking it up into manageable uh, components, each with a capable subcommander, is how you manage a large company. Or sorry, a large battle force. Uh, now, to make it real successful, the, the thing he points out is you need to have good communications or signals. So it kind of goes with that saying. Uh, not a whole lot of ways you can apply that directly to the tabletop. Uh, I might weave those two sentences into a different video on, on the subject of uh, command and control or something later. But they don't really stand well on their own within this chapter, <clears throat> so I'm not going to discuss them much. Now, with the remaining 21 sentences, there's a lot of meat there. I'm going to break this series uh, for Chapter 5 up into five separate videos. Uh, two reasons. One is there are some separate topics that are covered, uh, or angles he goes at the, the this idea of energy at. And unfortunately, uh, you know, I don't really want these to be long, drawn-out videos. <clears throat> Now, you know, we're already a couple minutes into this one, and you know, I'm just kind of laying out what we're talking about. So this one may be a little longer, but I'm trying not to make the videos themselves on these pieces of this chapter long. Again, trying to stay with Sun Tzu's uh, concise way of speaking and commu communicating. So let's just dive into uh, sentence number three. Now we're actually going to go through all the way to sentence 11. Sounds like a lot, seven sentences, but in this particular case, uh, several of these sentences talk, a, kind of reinforce his message uh, in, through an illustration, almost a metaphor. So I'll try to explain that at the end. All right, so I'm just going to read through. All right. To ensure that your whole host may withstand the brunt of the enemy's attack and remain unshaken. This is effective by maneuvers, direct and indirect. That the impact of your army may be like a grindstone dashed against an egg, this is affected by the science of weak points and strong. In all fighting, the direct method may be used for joining battle, but the indirect methods will be needed in order to achieve or secure victory. Indirect tactics, efficiently applied, are inexhaustible as heaven and earth, unending as the flow of rivers and streams. Like the sun and the moon, they end but to begin anew. Like the four seasons, they pass away and return once more. There are not more than five musical notes. In China, it's, it's a pentatonic scale, so five notes instead of the chromatic scale is eight. So, so that's where he's coming from here. There are not more than five musical notes, yet the combination of these five give rise to more melodies than the ear ever heard. There are not more than five primary colors, blue, yellow, red, white, and black, yet in combination they produce more hues than can ever be seen. There are no more than five cardinal tastes, sour, acrid, salt, sweet, and bitter, yet combinations of them yield more flavors than can ever be tasted. In battle, there are not more than two methods of attack, the direct and the indirect. Yet these two in combination give rise to an endless series of maneuvers. The direct and indirect lead on to each other in turn. 
It is like a moving in a circle. You never come to an end. Who can exhaust the possibilities of the other combination? Okay, it's kind of a long section there, but it's talking about two things, direct attacks and indirect attacks. Now, in some of the earlier commentaries uh, in the, these discussions, they are, uh, I think they, they kind of miss the point a little bit. They treat these two as completely separate. Uh, you can't interchange them. They, they don't mix. I think they really miss some of the points that Sun Tzu makes right there in his illustrations at the end. So, a couple points uh, we're going to build on. <clears throat> the first one, um, let's define what is a direct attack, what's an indirect attack. Indirect, sorry, a direct attack is what you expect. It's force A, force B, line up against each other and go after it. You know, right there out in the open, you can see it happen. Indirect attack is everything else. So these are situations where uh, you outflank. The situations where you come at the enemy by an unexpected direction, may not even be from the side. Uh, you do something the enemy, does, enemy doesn't expect. For example, you attack their supply train instead of their troops. Uh, you go after a capital um, instead of engaging them, force them to quit the field. Uh, so you win that battle by making them move away, right? Uh, you can feint. So you can actually use an, a direct attack that looks direct, make it look like a direct attack. It's really just a feint. Uh, makes the opponent think you're in one, one place. Well, you, use, you actually take your main attack and direct it against whatever target it is. So the, what looks like a direct attack, that feint, is actually an indirect attack. Uh, so there's a lot of combinations you can use, but you have to think in terms of the indirect is doing everything that isn't going straight at the enemy, hand-to-hand, -hand, face face-to-face, power-to-power. Uh, there's a lot of ways to engage the enemy without actually engaging them, and that's what Sun Tzu's been going through, and it spends a lot of time throughout his book going on. Now, the uh, sentence four talks about a, a metaphor he uses where you want your army to be like a grindstone dashed against an egg. We have as you can great image there. It's you can easily tell what's going to happen to the egg, but he talks about it. And it's only possible by the application of the science, he calls it a science, so there's something to think about there, of weak points and strong. Now, he's made those points before, uh, and I've kind of mentioned them in some of my previous Academy videos as well. Uh, you want to take your strengths and apply them against your opponent's weaknesses, uh, whether it's uh, characteristics or positions, whatever the weaknesses happen to be, you take advantage of those with your strengths. And, you, of course, you avoid your opponent's strengths. That is a science, uh, because we're talking about almost physics of warfare in that sense. Uh, uh, action, reaction. You know, what's going to happen when a mass, a large mass, hits something that's weaker? Uh, a lot of analogies, I'm not going to go into all that. But, uh, so that's what he's trying to, you're thinking of direct attacks, indirect attacks, strong against weak. Those four things, in any combination, any number of combinations, or what leads you to victory. And he spends verses, or sorry, uh, sentences basically five, well, actually six through nine, kind of using the metaphors of how there are only a certain number of these one things and they make an infinite number of combinations that you can experience. Five is his sentence that defines direct attacks and indirect attacks. But 10 and 11. Um, he guess basically reinforces the idea that you use them in combination and one leads into another. Sometimes the direct attack becomes the indirect and sometimes the indirect becomes the direct attack. And it's again, ties in with his earlier thoughts on uh, being flexible, being willing to change your plans. Your indirect attack, you know, for example, completely elim uh, going around your opponent to some other target, may be perceived by the opponent, and they decide to engage that indirect, your attempted indirect attack. Well, all of a sudden, that becomes a direct attack because it's a head-to-head -head engagement. Well, you, what was going to be your direct attack is left with nothing to do, so you turn that into an indirect attack, doing something different to your opponent. It's that constant fluidity of the, the combat 
and how it develops between your use of a direct and indirect, that is what he's talking about here. So, I don't want to kind of go any further. I don't want to talk about that any f further in depth because I don't want to confuse the issue. Uh, he said it very well. I want to keep this video short again. But please ask questions below. Uh, I will definitely go into more detail. Like, do a, uh, I'll do a, you know, basically a follow-on video, um, taking a closer look. But I do want to make sure that these points come across. Uh, you need to practice your direct attacks and indirect attacks, the feints. Uh, I think in the next few chapters, we'll, or not, sorry, not chapters, videos, we'll talk and give some more examples of that. But this one kind of sets up where Sun Tzu's headed for the rest of the chapter. All right. So I look forward to seeing you guys in the next Academy video. Uh, stay tuned. And again, share, like, subscribe. Let your friends know about this. Uh, comment below. Let me know what you think uh, about The Art of War. Get a copy of it yourself. And give me some advice uh, on things you want me to kind of address. Definitely ask questions. I'll be glad to kind of help explain. I see you guys. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.